Right to left, taking off. Gonna bring her up slow. Nothing on the elevator. Get that power in, there she goes, sitting up. And beautiful. Hello everyone, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James with part two of our unboxing and assembly series on the Nexa P40 and the Flying Tiger scheme that you see here. And this video is just gonna be a step-by-step -step, uh, assembly. So basically we're gonna go by the book so if you have this model and you want to go uh, through it, you can follow along. There's definitely a, uh, we have links to all the steps in the description of this video, so check it out. It's also on your little scroll at the bottom of your, um, the scrubber on the bottom of YouTube. You will see each step uh, is labeled. So um, again, we'll take you through the steps and then anywhere I might have made minor changes to what happened, we'll uh, include that within that step. But for the most part, she went together pretty by the book, which is is awesome which is what you like to see with any ARF kit so I say let's get started with the assembly okay pilots now the first five steps in the manual are all gonna be around the wings so that's what you're gonna want to start with get your two wing sections and you're gonna be able to complete these back and forth what you're gonna see in this video though we're just gonna show you the steps for how to install let's say one uh, aileron servo and then you're gonna do the other one obviously we're not gonna waste your time um, showing you repeats of things but basically what you're gonna want to do is double it up so we'll be showing you one wing and then you're obviously gonna do the same thing for the other wing. So step one is going to be getting your servos installed in the wing. So you're going to have one flap and one aileron servo to install in uh, both wings. So that's four total servos. So again, I'm using the high-tech HS 485 HB servos, as you see here. So what I like to do is I will open all four servos right away. I'll install the rubber grommets and everything that comes with the servo, get it ready. And then I'm also going to use a servo tester. That's another big thing you should have when you're building an ARF kit. I have this one from GT Power, which we sell on MotionRC.com. And uh, you want to be able to center your servos now. This is the best time to do it, so you have to do less work later. You're probably going to have to add sub-trim into your transmitter once you do get it all installed. But at least having your servos centered now, before you install them, uh, makes it easier because you don't want to have to take them out uh, just to do that once you get them installed. So get them centered as you see here. And then I use the, uh, the one-sided arm for both. Now once you get the arm centered on the servo, then you're going to want to go into the baggie from your kit that's going to have your link stops or your connectors because these are going to connect to your servo and that's what's going to hold your control rod in place. So they come with a washer, they come with a little hand tight nut that I used a wrench to put through. The book recommends maybe some silicon sealer you can have on there or some if you want to put some form of uh, glue on the end. I wouldn't use Loctite uh, for this step unless you can guarantee that the Loctite won't touch the plastic arm of the servo because it will eat the servo, but something to get it to secure into place. And then once you have that done, you will see uh, based on the manual that your flap arm servos are going to go down into the wing and your aileron servos come up through the cover. So you're just going to have to cut a little of the covering away from the, uh, the hatch for your aileron. And then you'll see inside that there's two pieces of, uh, of wood that your servo is going to fit perfectly uh, inside. So what I did is just line it up and that's where I used my hand drill and I pre-drilled the, uh, the four holes, two on each side, to mount your servo. So you're going to do this four times for both wings, two aileron servos and two flap servos. And in the book, again, they do have some degree of measurement, like your flap servo could be at 40 degrees. That stuff I will manually change later once I get it all connected up. I just want to make sure my servos are centered and they're installed correctly at this stage. And here as well, you can also add your servo extensions on the ailerons and the flaps. And you can snake those wires through and have them come out the side of the wing. So moving on to step two, here's where we're going to do our linkages. So this is where you're going to have to um, do a little bit of cutting with an X-Acto knife. You're definitely going to want to use your hand drill because you're going to have to make holes for the screws because some of these control horns are going to be screwed in and some of them get snapped in, but I also glued them in. So you can see here you're going to need two different types 
uh, control horns and they all come in the one bag with all the control horns which is nice so you'll see these ones they don't have a bottom side uh, they will slot in there for your flaps and then you have these types which are a little larger and they have a back part they're gonna get screwed through the aileron itself and uh, they get secured on the back side so what I ended up doing with the flap one is I there is a pre-cut at the factory you will see you got to feel through the covering there's a pre-cut notch uh, on the flap that you're gonna want to find you're gonna take an exacto blade cut that away and now they do give you another side to this that you could put through and I definitely use that but I also add some epoxy here or you can use some CA I don't want this to ever move I don't want to just rely on the plastic um, to stay secure and then for the aileron side again you want to just find out you could see now that your servos mounted um, you could just want to mount your aileron servo straight and neutral to where the servo arm for the aileron is coming out so just make a line um, going down towards the aileron and I just put it on the medius portion of the aileron there. And then once I lined it up, I used the hand drill to just pre-drill uh, pre completely through the aileron. So you're going to pop out the bottom side of it or the top side if you will because we're working on the bottom side of the wing to screw these in. Now within that bag of screws you will notice that they are all 20 millimeters except for two of them. Two of them are longer and they're 30 millimeters. Do not use the longest ones. You're going to need those for your rudder later. So you want to use two of the majority of the screws that you have in this bag and they are going to be 20 millimeters. So you're going to use four total. Two for each uh, control horn on each aileron. And again, you could always add a little more uh, glue if you want, just to make that uh, nice and strong. I'll drip a little thin CA on the back side of the screws. And then also, you might want to use some sort of wire cutters or pliers to uh, cut the tops because the screws are really long as they come out the back. So if you want it to be nice and flush, you could always cut the edges of the screws off on the other side of the wing. Now, since you already centered your servos, at this point, you can attach your control rods. So you would just need four of them. And again, you're going to have to do some cutting. The rods are very long. Uh, they give you plenty of space uh, to make mistakes, if you will. So you could cut them and keep cutting them down if you want. But uh, you could at least, since your aileron servos are centered, you can get the control rods installed. And this is where I installed the flap hinges as well because I'll sub trim out my flaps uh, in my transmitter. So I installed both of them and I use the middle hole on all the hinges as they show in the book. But that's something we'll get to when we talk about rates in the third video. So now step three as far as the wings go is going to be all the plastic bits around the landing gear. Again, your landing gear is already pre-installed, but if you notice that the wheel well itself is not uh, glued down, so you're going to have to do that yourself. And then you're going to have to install these two shields, two pieces on each wing. Uh, that you see here. So the first things first, what I wanted to do was glue in the wheel well. So I put a servo tester, I brought the gear up, and it's a good place to check if you have any issues with your landing gear, it's best to find it here. But the gear, when the gear was up, you see the wheel well, uh, this piece, you're just gonna have to clip off with a scissor, uh, two pieces, that's so you, again, your um, landing gear, your strut can go down into, uh, into the well once it's finished. And then what I did, uh, take a hobby knife or an exacto knife and just make a little line um, and take off some of the covering around the wheel well. So you can put the wheel well on, dry fit it, maybe use a pencil and outline it, and then just cut within because I like gluing uh, when I use CA or epoxy, I want it to be uh, plastic to wood. I never want to glue to the covering. That's just me, but uh, I think it helps. So once you peel that all away, I added some medium CA around the plastic and then I just pressed it on there and CA dries pretty quickly. Then once that was done, then you're going to do the two bits for your landing gear to cover your gear, these two shields. And then for the first one that covers the, the, the retract, you're going to need six of these 10 millimeter screws. And there's really only one place to line these up, but what I like to do is use the hand drill again, pre-drill, pre-drill, pre-drill. It is sheeted underneath, so um, you definitely don't want to just drive a screw through. You might end up cracking some of the wood or ruining it, so you definitely want to pre-drill it. 
add in the six screws there and then the last little shield that goes around the wing is going to fit on and I use two even though the book says four screws I ended up just using two and I find that it's pretty secure on there. All right, now step four in the manual is gonna be joining the wing. At this point, you should have two equally finished wing halves, and now we've got to join them together. So the first things first, you wanna take this spar that you have here, and you wanna make sure you find the dead center. If you notice, if you press this spar and dry fit it into a wing, it will go past the center into one side. So that's something you really don't want to happen because also this spar has the dihedral inside, which is, gonna, is what you're gonna want in your wing anyway once it becomes a one-piece wing. So the first thing I did was just measure the spar. As you can see here, I made a pencil mark across the middle and I found the exact middle of this spar. And then I dry fit it again and just give myself an idea of how it's gonna go. But now once that's done, now we can get to using our epoxy. So I like to use 30 minute epoxy whenever I'm doing something like this. Uh, it gives me more time to work. It gives better adhesion uh, versus a five minute epoxy. So 30 minute epoxy is where you're gonna wanna be. And I'm using this Benchcraft epoxy we have. Once you get that all mixed up, all I was doing at this point is enough to get half of this spar into just one wing. I want to wait for that to then dry before I try to join them together. Because again, if you try to press the wings together and the epoxy is not dry, then your spar could move within uh, the wings and that's something you don't want to happen. So I put the epoxy all on the inside of the uh, hole where your spar is going to go within the wing. I put some on the spar itself. And then here's where also, guys, if you've never done ARFs or work with epoxy, you want to try to have some isopropyl alcohol and like a towel next to you in case any of the epoxy gets somewhere you don't want it to go. If you get at it very quickly with some isopropyl alcohol, then you're not going to have any problems. So you want to watch out for dripping, things like that. Maybe put a towel down underneath when you do this. You're going to have to find a way that works for you. But once I pressed it in, I made sure that just my pencil mark was showing out the side and then I'm going to put this to the side and wait uh, 30, 45, 45 minutes. I just want to make sure it's nice and secure before I eventually join the other wing half to it. So there you have it. Now that's all dry and now we're at the point where we're going to join them together. So now you can see on the top parts of your wings that uh, this is where you're going to want to find the two nylon bolts. There's two big white nylon bolts that come in your kit. Those are going to be the bolts that you eventually will attach your wing to your fuselage. But for this purpose, it's going to help us um, keep the wings together while the epoxy cures once we join these. So at the top of each wing, you're going to find a little hole. You're going to take your uh, X-Acto knife or your hobby knife and just cut away the covering there. And what you're going to want to do is screw your two nylon bolts down. And again, you're screwing them into the top of the wing. Eventually, when you secure, they'll come through the bottom. But just for this section, when we join them, this was a big help. Because when you have those nylon bolts in there, you could then put a rubber band around the bolts. And that's going to help keep the wings together while the epoxy cures. Also, I ended up using like a vice grip or you can use a binder clip for the top part, for the front part of the wings, you see the two pieces of wood coming off the wings. That's gonna help keep those together. So once you have those materials ready, again, you're gonna wanna mix up more of your epoxy and you're really gonna put it in four places. You're gonna put it on the spar itself, a little bit in front of the spar, a little bit behind the spar, and then a little bit all the way towards the back. I ended up just putting the epoxy, slapping it on one side, I don't put it on both sides. Um, it just makes it easier when I press together. And again, once you line them up and you press them together, put on your rubber band around the nylon bolts, put on your clip, but then watch it a little bit and have your isopropyl alcohol and towel ready. In case any resin or epoxy starts coming through the seams, you wanna be able to wipe away that now especially if it's coming out the bottom. If it's on top, again, that part's gonna be hidden in the fuselage, so if you make a mistake there, it's not the end of the world. But if it's coming down the bottom, it's not something you wanna see. It happened to me as I did this, and I just wiped it away and uh, caught it before any problems arise. So make sure you do that. All right, so step six in this build is gonna be installing your horizontal stabilizer. So at this point, again, your stabilizer came out of the box and it had its control surfaces, the elevators attached to it. But again, remember, they're not glued down yet. They're glued to one side, but not to the full, to the full section. So you wanna take off your elevators 
And now here's where you're going to need your X-Acto knife or your hobby knife. You want to cut away the covering on the back of the fuselage. You can feel it with your fingers. You can see where it's going to go. Make sure you cut away the film uh, completely because your horizontal stabilizer is going to need to slide through this hole and be dead even. So now once you cut away the film, what I like to do is measure the horizontal stabilizer. Find the center point and mark it with a pencil. That's going to give you some general idea of uh, how this is going to go and you want to find a center so then you can measure again afterwards from both sides before you ever secure this down with any sort of epoxy or CA. Now once you make those pencil marks, what I did was then dry fit it. So send it through, line it up, and then take a pencil and you want to mark off uh, both sides of the top and the bottom of your uh, horizontal stabilizer because then when you pull a, pull out the horizontal stabilizer you're going to want to cut away the covering on both sides again when you're using epoxy or ca it's much better to have a wood to wood adhesion you don't want to have any adhesion to the covering it's not going to be as strong as it would be wood to wood so you can see here i made my pencil marks and then what I did was just go a little bit inside of the pencil mark and start cutting away. You don't have to go all the way to the edge because if you do, when you go to put your horizontal stabilizer back on, you might find that some wood is exposed and it's gonna not look the way you want it to look when it's all said and done. So go inside of your pencil marks and cut away all the covering on the top and bottom from the middle section of your horizontal stabilizer. So now the way the book uh, shows it to put to to install it is using thin CA glue. Um, I'm not a big fan of CA glue anywhere near my coverings, especially on the top. It tends to dry white. If you make a mistake here, um, it could go poorly. I went with 30 minute epoxy, so it's up to you. I decided to take the 30 minute epoxy. Again, it gives me time to make sure my horizontal stabilizer is nice and level. I have alcohol that I can wipe away, which won't do any damage to, um, to the covering on top. So what I ended up doing is mixing some 30 minute epoxy, putting it all on the inside of the hole, then I sent the horizontal stabilizer through. So definitely some resin and epoxy came out one side. It'll come out the side that you're pushing it through, um, and that's okay. Again, I wiped it up quickly with a rag, and it looked good as new when it was done. And then you could always add some more CA into the hole once it's there. But again, just make sure it's nice and center. You have your pencil marks at this point, and once it is, put it aside for 30 minutes before you even bother touching it. Now step eight is gonna be doing all the hinging. So guys, these come with pinned hinges. Uh, if you have pins, um, they could come in handy if you wanna keep them on. I ended up doing a dry fit and I noticed for the rudder, at least I had to open up a few of the holes on the back with an X-Acto knife just to make sure. Again, you always wanna dry fit hinges a bunch of times to make sure that they're gonna be level because this is something you don't wanna get wrong. Now for this step two, whenever you're working with hinges, I like to have some petroleum jelly, like a Vaseline or an Aquaphor is what I use. And because I'm eventually gonna epoxy these hinges in, and I don't wanna get any epoxy within the hinge. Because if you do, then it's, you're gonna basically ruin the hinge and it's not gonna move back and forth. So first things first, what I'm gonna do, uh, before I mix my epoxy, take all the hinges and just put Vaseline up against it. And I like to glob it on. I don't mind it. I could always wipe it away later. It's no problem uh, to me. It's not gonna do any damage to the covering. So I glob it on generously on both sides of the hinge itself. And since your hinges are already attached to the control surface at this point, what I ended up doing is mixing some 30 minute epoxy again. I would prefer to use 30 over five anytime, especially for hinges because I like to take my time. Again, a 30 minute epoxy is gonna cure in about 30 minutes, so you get about 15 good minutes to work with it before it starts to harden up and gets hard to work with. If you use a five minute epoxy, then you end up rushing, and when we rush, we make, us make mistakes. So again, 30 minute epoxy. I dab some on each side of the hinge, and then I just fit it in. So you're gonna do this for both elevators and your rudder. Overall, it'll be nine hinges that are going in to these sections. 
So now once you're done with that, you're gonna go back to your control horns. And again, it's gonna be the same control horns that you used for the aileron. You should have three more left. There'll be two for your elevators, one on each side, and one for your rudder. And then remember when you're doing this, uh, the same rules apply. You wanna use your hand drill and pre-drill once you, once you measure them up to where you wanna go. And remember that you should have two 30 millimeter screws and four 20 millimeter screws. So use the 20 millimeters for your elevators and the 30 millimeter screws you're gonna want for your rudder. The rudder is thicker, so it's gonna need the longer screws to attach that control horn. So now moving on to step nine, we're gonna do the tail gear. Again, it is a fixed landing gear. It's not retractable or anything, but you will see this is not something you had to do anything to the rudder before you installed the rudder. The first thing I did was attach the wheel to the axle and they have two grub screws there to make sure that you have enough space to give it roll and to secure it. So I secured that first. Then here you're gonna need a little CA. You will find underneath the rudder that there's a pre-cut section where you're gonna put this little piece. Uh, you can see this little circle piece. That's how you're gonna basically connect your tail wheel to the rudder itself and give it the ability to turn, obviously, which is what you want with the rudder. So once you see that in, I use a little medium CA. Got it in there, nice. And then you wanna slide your tail wheel through and then you're gonna use two of these 12 millimeter screws. They all, again, come in the same bag. Put them on the back part, on the bottom part of the fuselage, and again, you're gonna to wanna to pre-drill your holes before you drive the screws in. But once you do, then your tail gear is done, and you are done with the tail section of this P40. So now as far as the book goes, guys, here's where you get to your motor sections and installing motors. I wasn't ready to do that yet, so this is where I make changes. I still wanna get my servos installed for the rudder and the elevator. I figured I just did the tail, so let's finish that off. So again, you should have two more servos left of the uh, high techs if you're using our setup, but get them all set up. So get your grommets in, center your servos as you did before. And then you just wanna make sure your servo arms, they're gonna both be facing inward inside the fuselage and make sure you also want your wiring to head towards the canopy. It'll make it easier to plug into the, uh, into the receiver later. But you can see on the bottom of the fuselage, very easy access in here. These servos, again, were made for this plane. It seems like they fit in there perfectly snug. Then once you do that, you'll notice the rudder is just gonna use one control rod. So you can go to the back of the plane, send the rudder control rod through, and again, these are super long, so you're gonna need some sort of uh, wire cutters or steel covers like pliers to get them, to cut them off and away. But now with the elevator servo, remember one servo is gonna be driving two control rods. So they give you this little tri-connector and a small little piece of metal. So you're gonna basically put the metal through the center of this connector, then attach the grub screw to make sure that's taut. And then when you send the two long elevator control rods through their respective tubes on the back of the fuselage and towards the servo, they're gonna go into each side of this connector. That's uh, sort of the way it works here. So you can see it here and again, you're gonna have to cut away any excess. Don't cut away too much. You could always cut more. Don't cut away too much at the start. I'll, I'll leave it long until I make sure that it's uh, where I want it. Now the beauty of this section too is, since you've already centered your servos, your fuselage is open, you could basically finish off your rudder and your elevators here. So what I did was just level out the elevator and the rudder and then send in the grub screws. And since your servos again are centered, by the time you put up, put a, uh, install your receiver, uh, the, you're gonna do minimal sub trim at this point. So you can finish that part off now. Okay guys, now step 11 in this assembly is gonna be your motor. Again, we're going with an electric motor setup, so gas guys, I can't help you in this stage in this video. Uh, when I eventually do a gas uh, Nexa model, um, hopefully that'll help you guys out there. But for you guys running the electric setups, uh, I'm using the Admiral GP10. Now this step could take a long time. This video is gonna make it seem like it's a very easy task. 
it's it, it's not hard but it's tedious because you're doing a lot of measuring you're going to be putting the cowl on and getting this secured uh the way you want it to make sure that it has the angle is just a labor of love if you will going back and forth but i'll try to take you through uh just the steps of how i did it but again this is going to be you working on your ARF and manipulating uh, yourself to make sure it works. But first things first, if you're going with the electric setup, you do get this wooden motor mount. So that's sort of your plate um, that you're gonna attach your motor to. So first things first, I held that up to the firewall of the fuselage and I wanted to level uh, line it up because you're gonna have to pre-drill through the firewall because uh, obviously this is where it's going to attach and you do get a bag that has the four big bolts and all the nuts and washers you're going to need to secure this in essence each bolt is going to get four nuts one on the front and back of the firewall and one on the front and back of the uh, motor mount itself so after pre-drilling the firewall now we want to pre-drill the motor mount that wooden piece that comes with the kit so I used the metal motor mount that comes with the Admiral GP10 motor, held that up to the plate. And now what I will say for this Admiral GP10, uh, I ended up having to re-drill this a second time. I had to raise it up. Don't go by the hole in the center of this wooden plate. You're gonna need it higher based on the P40 cowl. So the top of my motor mount is almost at the top of this wooden plate. It's hard to give you an exact measurement, it's just something you're gonna have to trust me on as, as we went through. But uh, get that pre-drilled. And then you can attach the metal mount that comes with the GP10 to the back of the, the motor. Obviously the motor comes with the, uh, the prop shaft and everything, you can fix that on yourself. And now at this point, this is where you're gonna be doing a lot of work. So it's tough to show, um, it's tough for our cameraman to film the entirety of, uh, of this process as we're going back and forth. But obviously you're doing a lot of loosening and tightening of your bolts, putting your cowl back on, and just trying to find the exact measurement uh, you're gonna need. The one thing I like about this cowl, it basically fits on snug like a glove. Um, every time you go to put it on, um, it only goes so far back, so I just made a little pencil mark um, so that every time I would put it on to measure to make sure I had enough distance uh, for my prop to turn, if you will, to get that back plate on the motor, out past the the cowl um it took a little bit and i will tell you i ended up having to take my motor mount with the uh, metal mount off the wood and i added two nuts and a washer and two washers between the wood and the metal motor mount and that gave me just enough space i believe it was five and a half inches is what you need from the firewall all the way out to the hole of the cowl so again, this where I could have, at this point, I could have maybe grabbed longer bolts um, if I wanted to. Uh, this is where your modeling comes into play because every motor is different. So unless you're using my motor, your situation might be different from mine. And obviously if you're using a gas motor, then throw everything we said out the window. So either way, guys, this is where it's gonna take manipulation. And uh, I hope some of the images you're seeing on the screen right now uh, can help and show you that it just takes time. But once you get that through, you are virtually now done um, with this setup. At this point, you would be able to now install your ESC and you could see I ended up just mounting it. There were holes in the cowl for airflow. So I just put my ESC directly behind it. I drilled a little hole on the side and uh, I also soldered in longer leads on the Mantis ESC to get, the, uh, to get through the uh, firewall into my battery hatch to make it easier for me to plug in your battery. Again, a soldering iron, something you might, you might need if you're gonna be doing ARFs because you'll never be able to plug in your battery um, with the length of the ESC that I went with if you didn't. Then once your ESC is mounted, your motor's on, now you can put the cowl on and finish it off. So they just give you these four nice black screws and what I ended up doing is I just measured about an inch off. You could see there's four pieces of wood on the side of the, uh, 
of the fuselage for your cowl to mount to. So I just found the center point. I measured an inch or an inch and a half back from that and made a pencil mark so that when I put the cowl over, I would be able to then measure from my mark back uh, the same distance and know that I was dead center on those four plates. And then as always, pre-drill your cowl. You don't want to try to send a screw through here. You will crack the fiberglass um, cowl, so don't do that. Definitely use a pre-drill and you want a wider drill for that portion. Now once that's complete, again, depending on the motor you went through, um, you're going to obviously put on the spinner. So it's up to you of what prop you're going to use. I went with a Master Air Screw 15 by 7 I, did have to I didn't have to drill out the inside of it. I did have to use a reamer on my drill press to drill the middle hole of the back plate just to fit on the shaft of the uh, Admiral motor. So that was about it, but it fit on there nice and easy. And then you just have some ancillary bits to finish off your model from here. So you can see we have a light, they give you a LiPo battery stand or a tray. So I ended up putting that in there and I just C8 it to the wood that was already down. There are two grooves in the firewall, but I ended up drilling through those um, <laughs> to get my motor to mount. Um, so I just reversed it and C8 it really, you know, it's just to hold your battery in place. So there's more than enough, it shouldn't fall or anything, as long as you use enough CA. Then turning the aircraft over, you have these bottom shields that go over uh, the, the, the wing section. So at this point, you can now install your wing and your wing is just those two nylon bolts that you originally uh, used to help uh, glue the wings together. So you can see that there are holes there and these plastic pieces line up perfectly. So what you're going to do, similar to how you did the uh, horizontal stabilizer, lay down the plastic, use a pencil to trace the covering on the sides, and then you're going to go, you know, millimeters inside of that line that you just made and just cut away all the, the covering. Expose all the balsa, then I just added CA on both sides up and down the plastic and just pressed it on and it fit perfectly and then there's a little section that you had to cut off from this big plastic shield that goes actually on the fuselage itself because one part will be able to come with the wing and uh, you know unless you never plan on taking it apart then you want to cut that but for storage purposes definitely give it a cut and get that uh, assembled and then your last step from here guys are going to be adding your decals now again doing the shark's mouth I am not the best decaler in the world. Uh, that was a pain in the butt, I will tell you. Uh, you. I had to end up cut through the black of the middle of the mouth to get it to sort of wrap. Maybe you guys are better than I am. I did my very best. It looks good from far, but it might be far from good. But all the other decals are there and they give you a little sheet on the back. There's nothing you're really gonna need to put on the wings. There's a couple no steps that I didn't add. But your big 88, your tail decals, the flying tiger, and the, the, uh, the Chinese lettering that goes above the exhaust with the eye and the mouth, they're all there. And she looks great um, when she's done, when she's all done up. So uh, overall, guys, I hope you enjoyed that assembly. Now let's go back to the table and wrap up this video. There you have it, guys. That is a full assembly, step by step of the uh, Nexa P40. Again, that took me about, I'd say about 12 hours, uh, three, four hour sessions. Obviously when we're trying to film, we're setting up some of the shots, so it probably wouldn't take an experience builder that long. But um, that's about what you're getting into with an ARF, eight to 12 hours. Um, a lot of it is just busy work. You're repeating the things over and over. But um, if you're new to this, the motor installation is probably going to be the toughest part of uh, of any ARF kit because you want to make sure you get that right. You want to make sure you get the right angle off the firewall. So you're co I'm constantly putting the firewall back on, getting the distance between the back plate and the cowl itself. Um, you just, you know, and that's where sometimes we call it MacGyvering things. Uh, you have to just think on your feet and uh, come up with a different way. So again, every electric motor is going to be different, different lengths. So, it, you know, it's really the type of thing that anybody who's doing this would be prepared for. But if you've never built an ARF, it could seem daunting, but you can do it. It's not, 
It just takes time. Uh, again, you'll think through it and get it done. But the rest of it is pretty clean, guys. Now, as far as this video, it's already gone on long. This is part two of this build video. So in our last video, that's going to be um, probably my maid, probably not my maiden flight. I'll make sure I'll get a few flights in, but we'll do a full flight. And then we could talk about the CG. I could show you the watt meter stats on it and things like that. And uh, we can go around the field. Features. So stay tuned for that video guys. Thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions about this build, you can head over to Hobby Squawk. I have the link to the uh, thread I made in the description of this video or just ask away in the comment section. Uh, guys, I hope that helped you. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time at Motion RC.